Hello everyone and welcome back to another video lecture from Mrs. Semino. Today we're going to be talking about the introduction of the behavior of gases as well as gas laws. So one of the first objectives in this video is to describe why gases are easier to compress than liquids or solids, to describe the three factors that affect gas pressure, and this is a biggie and hence you'll need this for your Google form. So to our first objective, which was that compressibility of gases. So here it says that gases can expand to fill its container, unlike solids or liquids, and hopefully that's a trait you already knew. But the reverse is also true. They are easily compressed or squeezed into a smaller volume. And we've all done this where we've been able to kind of take a balloon and squish it. It doesn't pop. It's pretty flexible, and we can make it in a little smaller space. Um, this compressibility is a measure of how much the volume of matter decreases under pressure. So how much are, pressure are you putting it and how small does that balloon get in essence? This idea of compressibility helped develop the idea of airbags and automobiles. And it says here, in an accident, the air compresses more than the steering wheel or the dash when you strike it. So that's why we're saying it's better to hit the airbag than it is to hit the steer steering wheel or the dash. And so the impact forces the gas particles closer together because there's lots of empty space between them. So when you strike it, um, you're not really getting hurt. You're just pushing these molecules closer to each other, and it's better than hitting a solid object like the dash of the steering wheel. So when I first saw this fact, I was kind of blown away, and it says at room temperature, the distance between particles is about 10 times the diameter of the particles. So if you remember back to the kinetic molecular theory, we said that the size of the particles was insignificant in our measurements, and so now we can see why, because there's 10 times the diameter of each particle in them. So a cool fact about this is that the empty space makes gases good insulators, actually. And so if you've ever gotten a new home and it has the double pane windows, there's actually like a special type of gas blown in between those windows to help insulate, meaning keeping your uh, cold air in in the summertime, keeping the cold air out in the wintertime. Also, coats might even have like these like little pockets. And if you've ever had like a pillow topped quilt, those like little pillows also act as insulators. So then the question that I want you to think about is how does the volume of particles in a gas compare to the overall volume of the gas? We still want to say that they're pretty small in comparison to the overall volume or to the overall space that the volume is taking or the gas is taking up. So this is a super important slide because it's going to tie in to the next uh, video that we're going to watch. And this one says variables that describe a gas. So the four variables that can affect gas pressure are pressure itself, volume, temperature, and the amount of gas that we have. Let's pay attention to these units here. Um, so the first thing, pressure is in um, P, it stands for pressure. But then the unit that we measured in are KPAs, and these are kilopascals. Um, don't forget, we've also mentioned other units of measurement for gases. There is atmosphere. There was TORS, which is also the same as saying millimeters of mercury. But the SI unit, or the one that you're always going to want to get into, is this kilopascals. Then we had volume, which is measured in liters. Temperature, which is in Kelvin. So if you have a Celsius temperature, remember you're going to have to convert it into Kelvins. And then the amount of the gas, which we're measuring in moles. So here it says the amount of gas, volume, and temperature are factors that affect the gas pressure. So these are the different variables that we're going to be using or calculating. So one of the biggest things that can affect gas pressure is the amount of gas. So when we inflate a balloon, we are adding gas molecules. So increasing the number of gas particles increases the number of collisions, thus the pressure increases. And you know I love these silly examples, so let's just take an analogy. Let's say um, one day we did not have the freshmen or the seniors come to school. How would that affect the hallways? Would you be bumping into as many people? Would there be as many like confrontations? And I'm hoping you'd say no because there'd be definitely less people in the hallways. And you can kind of think of the same way. The more gas particles we have, the more collisions there are. And remember the definition of pressure was the force at which those collisions are happening and the number of collisions. So we're obviously increasing the gas pressure. So if temperature is constant, then doubling the number of particles doubles the pressure. So we might say it's a very direct proportional relationship. So going off of the last slide, 
pressure and the number of molecules are directly related. And remember that means as one goes up, another goes down. So here it says more molecules means more collisions and fewer molecules means fewer collisions, just like that student in the hall example that I was giving you. And then the other thing that's super important that we need to know is that gases naturally move from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure because there is empty space to move into a spray can as an example. And we're going to do a worksheet on an aerosol can, but the idea is that aerosol cans are under high pressure, and the reason they spray is because outside the can is low pressure, and then once the pressure inside starts to decrease, you can notice the spray starts to decrease because there's less of that pressure difference between the inside and outside of the can. So here is that common use. A practical example is this aerosol can. So gases move from this high pressure to lower pressure. A propellant forces the product out. An example of this is whipped cream, um, hairspray, and paint. There's also some figures in your textbook, and like I mentioned, we're going to do that worksheet in class. But then the question is, is the can ever really empty? So think about that one, and we'll come back to it. The second factor that's definitely going to affect gas pressure is the volume of a gas. So in a small container, the molecules have less room to move. The particles hit the sides of the container more often, and as the volume decreases, the pressure increases. Um, thus, the volume and pressure are inversely related to each other. So the example that I like to use here is, say, I took 50 students and I put you in the gym and I asked you guys to walk around randomly in the gym. Um, there's a good chance that none of the students will hit each other because there's lots of room in the gym. But then what if I put those 50 students in my classroom? Well, there's going to be more collisions. You guys are going to be bumping into each other more often because there's less space to move around. So as the volume decreases, the pressure would increase, and this is what we mean by that inverse relationship. Another factor that definitely affects gas pressure is the temperature of the gas. So raising the temperature of a gas increases the pressure if the volume is held constant. The molecules hit the walls harder and more frequently. So the question is, should you throw an aerosol can into a fire? What could happen? And I'm hoping you're going to say no because you're going to move those particles even faster and the can would explode. And then the next question, should your automobile tires, when should you check your automobile tires? Well, I'm hoping that you're going to say that you're going to check them when they're cool because if you've been, um, you know, driving on them for some time, they're going to be hotter and that pressure then is going to be hotter. So remember, the temperature of a gas does affect gas pressure because it increases that kinetic energy, which increases the motion and the speed of the particles. So there's more particles because they're moving faster, and the collisions are stronger because the particles are moving faster. So I hope that you remember from this video that gases can be compressed because there's lots of space in between them. Um, remember the factors that affect the gas pressure and why each of them do, as well as the relationship between them.